Now, correct me if I'm incorrect, but I'm pretty sure there's a bleed too, because I've seen some alleged sprites from it, and they just made Rin look better. You know, same basic design, just a bit refined. Is that just a fan thing, or is it made up, or is it actually a thing? Because if it is a thing, <laughs> I'm kind of going to want that at some point. I'm going to make a decent stab attempt at 100%ing this one first, though. There are a few games I have the drive to try in 100%. So far I can count the number I've managed to do it in on the fingers of one hand. Piss. You don't have to kill that guy, I just like to do it. The evil orange Pikachus of untimely demise. Perhaps. Whoa, that was close, wasn't it? We got hit by a furball. Well. I'll give it a couple more tries. See if you just use arcade mode. Oh, does it still count in there? I didn't realise that. I'll do that then. <laughs> Herby derby derby derp derp. Let's do it! Probably right though, yeah. I mean, obviously, the idea would be that I'd be able to just breeze through this and fucking no hit clear it without any trouble, but um, I'm not. I'm good at the game, but I'm not that good. <laughs> not yet, anyway. I have tried out a few of the alternate characters. I mean, only people who know the game are going to really understand what I'm talking about at this point, but fuck it. Uh, none of them impress me, because they all just seem to have a gimmick that makes you less powerful. They're interesting, don't get me wrong, I'm pissed. They're interesting, but they don't seem to be very effective. <laughs> yeah, really good effort. Yeah, you're right, it is quicker restarts, just kill yourself and then it's straight back, yeah. I mean, to go back to the characters, um, my go-to example there really is um, the robot. Not the robot Rin, the other robot. White Mark 1, I think it is. It's a really cool idea that your, you know, a, your general strength goes up as your ranking increases, but it becomes basically impossible to do that when every five seconds you're dropping back to completely worthless. <laughs> because, you know, you have to maintain it, otherwise, you know, you suck again. And that's hard. Especially given that it decreases on its own over time, if you're not killing things. Alright, doing good so far. Well, that was a bad idea. Whoop! Okay, let me just uh, chill for a sec. The yellow bar being your, um, the time you can slow down time for. And it drains constantly as you use it, and regenerates when you're not using it, but if you run it out completely, then you have to wait till it recharges to about, I don't know, three quarters before you can use it again at all. So it, uh, it pays to manage it well. Rather than being an idiot, like I frequently do. Because it's hard to keep an eye on it when you're in the midst of an intense combat situation. Speaking of intense combat situations, is the bit of the level I really don't like. Because you pretty much have to get that spot on and not get hit. Fuck. It was all going so well. Well, let me just see if I can beat the helicopter without getting hit again. Just out of interest. Sacred. Because I'm sure me restarting constantly is very boring. Well! <laughs> I'm out of practice, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Weirdly enough, you can hit the helicopter when it's in the background. You shouldn't be able to, but you can. Oh, well, that was stupid. 
That's a case of pressing the wrong friggin' button. Oh, piss. Okay, I've got hit too many times now for it to be worth it. Kill me! I want to die! I didn't like the other characters either. To reiterate, in the arcade mode, you can set your health to one hit so you don't have to police yourself. Oh! Well, I didn't know that, did I? That's good. That's very good. I like that you can do that. I must be insane. I'm doing very hard with one hit. Welp! <laughs> Gonna give it a damn good go. I wish I'd known about this sooner, actually, because uh, the way I was doing it is what I was doing in the beginning of the, of the attempt, was just going into the level normally and playing it and trying not to get hit once, and when I did, get frustrated and quit, <laughs> generally speaking. Now, as I recall, if you want to do this, it pays to be reasonably speedy, particularly for bits like that, because then you don't end up with a wall of orange furballs building up, and you can sort of preempt the enemies. Like there, for example. Now they go down to a D rank. It does seem to be very inconsistent sometimes. Like, like sometimes I'll have like a, a B or an A by this stage in the level, and sometimes I'll have gone back down to a D through no real fault of my own, as far as I can tell. I'm sure, there's a science behind it. We should knew what it fucking was. Oh my god. But yeah, if you don't have this game, get it because it's amazingly good. If you're any kind of fan of, you know, fun <laughs> or good game design or any of that jazz. Alright, back to the helicopter. Now, it is possible to get through this without getting hit. It's just a bit awkward because you've got to sort of hover on these sticky outfits. That was bad. That was very bad. Abusing my time slowing power. Oh, shitting f. It is sort of just hop on and off the wall like that to stay behind it to get cover from the machine gun because otherwise you can't dodge it. Okay, now for the interesting bit. What I do like is you can change your two weapons at any time by just pausing it. But generally you have two that you can switch between. The dual pistols is pretty much your your standard, but there's really not a good reason not to have it equipped because you need to have that piss. You need to have a piss. It's just all over the floor. <laughs> so why do purple fly things and Garfield's skinny cousin not like you? Who knows? Oh yeah, I should probably <laughs> mention the story. The idea is that um, there's there's um like this institution where heroes are. Uh, inaugurated and um, apparently one hasn't been done for like over a hundred years which sucks because you know they're all the existing heroes have got lazy and opulent like this guy for example um, so this character Rin really wants to be a hit why did I do that also I apparently didn't set health to one hit again so I'm gonna just come out of there. Uh, anyway so she sets uh, her task to be uh, kill all the old heroes to prove that she's the best so you go through them systematically uh, in order of weakest to strongest. The first one being Guppy, who hopefully you're going to get to see before the night is over. I mean, I have gotten to him without getting hit before. I've just never managed to beat him without getting hit before. Because he's, he's tricky to do without getting hit once. He's not very difficult, but to not get hit at all is a pain. This game you're recommending it. Oh yeah, probably should uh, should warn you. It's yeah, it's got quite a steep learning curve. But when you get it, you get it like really easily. I mean, that might just have been me, but when I first streamed it was when I first played it at Sleeves' recommendation, and I it took me a bit of getting used to because the jump button is the fucking trigger button on the uh, on the Xbox controller at least. 360 controller, I should say. Is, yeah, but once you get used to it, it works really, really well. You can also play it on a keyboard, which gives you much more precise aiming, because you use the mouse, but then screws your jumps over, because you can only jump in eight directions, rather than any direction, as you can maneuver quite accurately with an analog stick. So I prefer to have that freedom of movement, because being able to target your jumps that accurately is crucial. 
I don't feel you can really accomplish much in the game without being able to do that. I could be wrong, you know, people might be able to do a lot better at it than I do with the mouse and keyboard, but uh, I'm not seeing it. I tried a hybrid of the two once, one hand on the mouse, one hand on half of the controller, it didn't work out terribly well for me. Whoop, that was a mistake. Quickly now. Okay, I'm just going to cheese this one. That was a missile, a little too close for comfort. Probably didn't deserve that. I'm just going to chill here for a sec, get my speed power back, just so I can make sure I can get out of here safely. Alright, now it is possible to beat the helicopter without getting here, and I've done that before fairly easily. If I was to sum up this game, it would probably be Beautiful Joe in 2D with guns. I mean, hell, even this helicopter boss is very similar to the same uh, boss from that game. Through the uh, gap there, and whoop, whoop, whoop! Plus, there's nothing quite as liberating as having a quadruple jump that you can steer like this. But I don't think there's any other game where you have that level of freedom of movement. There you go, that's how you beat a helicopter without getting hit. Now, she doesn't have a dialogue. Normally, if you manage that, she comes up with a little bit of dialogue saying, hee hee, I'm such a badass. Okay, here's the first boss Guppy! He's a weird sort of flying slug monster, as far as I understand it. Also, this game has the best boss music ever! I hope you can hear it. Because if you cannot, I'm gonna be rather disappointed. It helps that I have his attack pattern pretty much memorized. But I say pattern. Really, it's they have a couple of attacks and they'll just pick one at given points. He does change things up though, he um, he splits up in a bit when you've done a certain amount of damage to him. And then it becomes really awkward. Because now there's four of him and they all still fire at you. You get a, a sound you know, sort of cue as to when that's going to be. But it's still a pain in the ass to dodge. As I'm sure you can appreciate. Ah! Pissing balls! Beautiful Joe was in 2D. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, you know what I mean, though, right? <laughs> the assets, exactly. Okay, well, given that I don't have to keep quitting out and policing myself, I'm going to keep going with this for a bit. If it gets boring, I might do another level, or I might move on to something else. But hot damn, I do love this. Okay, that doesn't count. You, you didn't see that. That wasn't real. No, I just go straight to uploading score, there's no retry prompt. It's kind of a dick move, actually, because then I have to keep doing that. It's still quicker than doing it the way I was doing it before, but it's kind of annoying. I'm determined to do it, though. I mean, it might take me a long time to manage, but sooner or later I'm going to beat every level in the game without getting hit once quite how I'm going to manage the um, the final couple of levels, I don't know. They are ridiculously hard. I had enough trouble with those on just hard, let alone very hard. In fact, I still haven't beaten the game on hard, question mark? Actually, I think I have. I think that was a lie. Took me quite a lot of effort to do it, though. I don't remember how far I've gotten on very hard. I shouldn't say gotten, it's grammatically wrong. I don't think I've done much more than this first level, actually. Or possibly the second one, I forget. Second level's pretty tricky as well, but the boss is, uh... Well, actually, I'm lying. The boss is relatively difficult there as well. <laughs> this game don't fuck about. This is the Donkey Kong section of the level. 
Because you know what you're doing, it's relatively straightforward. You just gotta know at what point to jump and where to aim it, because otherwise you will get hit by a barrel mid-jump, and it's very annoying when that happens. Alright. Let's dodge this helicopter, why not? Why not? See, the tricky part about the bouncing on the wall thing is dropping too low and then end up using the dash jump, because it means you end up getting more easily hit by the bullets underneath. This one's a little bit easier to do it on, because it's just by the virtue of it being a little bigger. Okay, here goes. Well, that was a valid attempt! <laughs> oh, hello, Talamino, and welcome. Yeah, the weird cat things are weird cat things, that's about accurate. And yes, you missed Binding of Isaac. It was a good run. It's recorded, so, you know, like every other stream video I've done as of late, one day I'll upload it to YouTube, when I can be bothered to edit them. I do still intend to record things, by the way. I haven't you know, given up on that whole idea. It's just finding the time and the patience. I'll see what I can do tomorrow if there's an opportunity. Because I had a game on... You know, on... What's the word made by it? On my mind, I suppose, for doing that in. With... Hooper Garble! I'm talking with all the words! And then there's the orange Pikachus. Okay, those are going to infinitely spin, so I'm wasting time. Oof. I think I earned a few style points there. Not gonna get to hang on to them for very long though, because if the what time you're spending not blowing shit out of things is times you uh, time you're losing style points. That's enough of that shit, thank you. Also, side note, I may have mentioned this the last time I played this, but for the people who weren't there and for the people who don't remember, so that's everyone all together, um, I can't help but feel this game's got at least a little bit of inspiration for I Want to Be the Guy. Without spoiling anything, partly sort of because of the way the last boss works, and partly because of that weird blank expression Rin has. That was almost a tragedy, right there. That's all, yeah, that's straight mouth. It kind of reminds me of the graphical style. I mean, I'm probably completely off base here, but that's, that was the feeling I got. That and the difficulty. Because this is a hard game. Let's not, let's not, you know, pull any punches here. It is not an easy game by any stretch. Fuck! I reckon you should LP Advance Wars Dual Strike. Kind of shame that the whole star meter thing becomes ultimately pointless once you've bought everything. I disagree. I think it's a measure of how cool you are at any given moment. And plus, it's a, you know, it, I don't know. Just seeing that S rank in pink up at the top is kind of a. I find it a driving factor. It makes me want to try hard to maintain it, if that makes sense. Plus, it always feels better if you manage to finish a level with an S rank. Because it's just, you know. A display of awesome. In terms of practicals, you know, in the practical sense, yeah, it is worthless, but in terms of the completely impractical looking cool factor, you know, it's completely still a thing. I don't like infinitely respawning purple things! Great fan of infinitely respawning orange things, but fortunately they don't. The projectiles do. With a few that have a hairball problem. Anyway, actually, this time I'm on a C rank when I get to here. I think it's just it, you know, the amount of time between kills. If it's too much, it'll drop. Plus, you get um, piss. If you very, very narrowly dodge something in slow mode, you get a boost there as well. I personally think I want to be the guy to have a pretty strong influence on a lot of indie games. Just the idea that a lot of people really enjoy that hard as balls challenge. Yeah, I mean, I maintain to this day that I want to be the guy, as in the original, I want to be the guy, is a good game 
in its own way. It's not you know, amazingly good, and it's full of glitches and crashes and fuck, I'm paying attention there, and crashes, you know, every two seconds. But I think for what it does, it's good, and I think it's better to play it when you know all the ZOMG traps. You know, as in the ones that pop up and kill you when you weren't expecting it. When you know they're there, then it's more about the challenge of dodging the rest of it. And doing the pixel-perfect platforming. So I still like it. I'll still dip back into it every now and again, just for fun. Probably won't ever try and beat it on any of the higher difficulties, because I'm not sure I have the patience. Especially what with it crashing in places. You know, less save points means... Fewer save points, I should say. Means lots of frustration is possible there. But I still like it. The various fan games it spawned, now those are all garbage. <laughs> Piss. Alright, this is, this is called me not paying enough attention. I agree with that, actually, Sleeves. I would love to see that. Because then they could incorporate the hidden items that were never finished. Or never did anything. I never managed to get any of those, because they were they're friggin' impossible. It just, you couldn't do it. <laughs> I maintain you couldn't actually do it. I mean, one of them was entirely dependent on, you know, jumping at the exact right pixel before Mechaburdo to make sure you got enough height to reach the, um, a certain ledge so you could get to it. And then the room before it is just fucking impossible to get through, so I honestly don't know how anyone managed it. And they don't do anything anyway. <laughs> it's an exercise in futility. But yeah, they can make them do something. So honestly, I'd be all for that. And what they could do is what they did with that um, remake of La Milana. They could change some of the uh, surprise traps to catch veterans of the game off guard. So like you'd expect one thing and then it kills you in a different way because you were expecting it. Does that make sense? Like, okay, so what would be a good example? Like when the moon falls near the beginning and tries to crush you, they could change the way it moves so that someone who knows it's coming will go to dodge one way and then it'll get them anyway. I think that would be kind of neat. And yeah, yeah, mainly making it stable and not crash at me. Fuck! Yeah, I keep meaning to play the La Milana remake, but I never played the original... Well, that's a lie. I played the original and couldn't get past Suck It. But I don't know. I don't know. Something's always put me off. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's laziness. It's probably laziness. Alright, I'm going to not do this level on loop for very much longer. Maybe a couple, like, you know, two, three, four more attempts. One more serious attempt. If I manage to get the guppy again, that'll be when I call it. If I don't manage to get the guppy again, let's say five more attempts, including this one, that seems like a fair place to stop. And then I'll find someone else to do. Eat hot death! Oh, okay, fine. I guess I will be the one who is eating the death. I know all the traps, I just can't play platformers at any degree of competence. I think Shovel Knight has killed me more with the level itself than any of the enemies. <laughs> yeah, the original La Milana is... It's so fucking out there, I don't think I'd be able to beat it without you know looking stuff up. When I played it, I was writing down all the stuff on the tablets with the intention of not looking anything up. Because I thought, well, you know, every solution to every puzzle is somewhere in the game. So maybe the idea can be I'll make like a series of notes and then I'll be like, oh, I wonder if that's in my notes when I come to a puzzle. But having seen that LP and seeing some of the stuff that's just, what the fuck, why would you ever think to do that? I don't, I, yeah, I don't think I'd get very far. And as I said, I couldn't get past Suck It anyway, so I kind of gave up on that idea. Might try and play the remake at some point because it's a bit less unfriendly to the user. But I still haven't got around to it. I mean, hell, there's a, there's a fucking sequel to that game now, isn't there? I seem to remember someone playing that at one point. I've got more than enough of a backlog as it is. Which segues nicely into something, actually, that I was going to bring up. I'm thinking of making this Friday, you know, couple of hours stream a fairly... a more regular thing. Maybe not every week, but you know more regular than never. 
and the intention is to try and cut out some of my backlog of games. Just try and play some of the stuff I've had sitting around for yonks and never touched, or, you know, never finished. Okay, that was a little closer than I'd like. I'm just going to go back down here for safety until I've got slow down powers again. I have a method to that, and it usually involves preserving a bit more of my speed up powers, or speed down powers, or whatever. My superpowers. Of some description! But yeah, wouldn't, I mean, is that the kind of thing that people would enjoy, perhaps? It seems like a good excuse, if nothing else, to try and get some of them done. To push me into starting them. I mean, hell, I had this for quite a long time before I first played it, and that was only because Sleeps uh, requested it at one point. Ah, oh, he fired an extra missile! Okay, well, that was two attempts out of the five. Attempt three. I mean, I don't actually... Because there's so many of them, I couldn't name off the top of my head what any of them are going to be. But that would be the plan. Some of them would require me to get my Dazzle set up and sorted, and I still haven't managed to do that. It's sitting on the floor next to me right now, and it's been there for a couple of weeks. I've got all the cables and everything, I just need to set it up and, you know, make it work. <laughs> but yeah, there's quite a few console games that I've not touched that I would quite like to do. So if anyone wants to give me a hand with that, you know, feel free. <laughs> It will open up a few more avenues as well. Well, okay, that was just clum clumsy, but yeah, that was a 10 3. I'll stick to my word. I love seeing people play games for the first time and your reactions are pretty damn awesome. <laughs> yeah, as I suppose so. Well, what I'd probably try and do first is finish games I like got halfway through or some way into it and just stopped. Case in point, Final Fantasy X. That might be the first one, actually, because I got a long way into that and then just stopped and haven't been back in years. Literally years, because when I first got my PS2, you know, way after the fact, obviously, because I got it you know, secondhand, dirt cheap, and FF10 was one of the first games I picked up for it, and I started playing it then, and that was you know, a good two, maybe even three years ago. And I know Final Fantasy games aren't that interesting, but I just want to get out of the fucking way, to be honest with you. <laughs> just to say that I've beaten it, because I like the game, I just, oh, piss. I just hate the story. I'm usually around to help you set it up if you like. I'm pretty techy. Good! Right, I'll try and do that at some point. Alright. We'll give it the one more attempt and then I'm going to try something slightly different. Bayo Blind, your reaction would be amazing. Yeah, Bayonetta is definitely one of the games that I haven't touched and should. Preferably before I get hold of the sequel. It's bound to happen sooner or later. I've tried my best to avoid spoilers for that game. I think I did have one major thing spoiled, but I didn't internalize it, so I don't remember what it was. Something to do with what you fight at the end, but I don't remember what it was. Or, you know, how it's relevant. So I hope I'm not going to remember that at any point. Well, that was nearly very silly. I nearly just sat there and took that purple blob to the face. And we don't want that. Ah! Okay, that was the five. That was the five. I'll stop. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put it back down to easy and maximum health and try and do the game on one health bar. So you'll at least get to see a few more levels now. Also, the game becomes ludicrously simple, so at least in the early levels, so errors are going to be stupidity only. Just because I'm sure you're all getting sick of seeing the same fucking level ad nauseum. I'm not sure how far I will get with it. I don't remember how far I got last time. I attempted it on easy with the full health bar. Reasonably far, I think. Don't think it was the last level, but it was close. See, now it doesn't matter if I get hit. I mean, it matters to me because it makes me look bad, but. 
doesn't matter in the grand scheme. I mean, really, on easy, I should not be getting hit on the first level, so that was entirely my own fault. See, they got rid of the barrel thrower from there to make things a bit easier for you. And from there... They took away the machine gun attack from the helicopter in this section, making it a lot easier, because you don't have to hang about. And they've made some bits of this uh, fight easier as well. I think the helicopter's a little slower to move, especially on the sort of forward charge it's doing right now. I like to say the flamethrower is awesome in slowdown mode. <laughs> it fires the machine gun for less time there. It only fires half as many rockets for this part. Basically, easy mode is for wusses only. Or people trying to beat. Yeah, this is the badass bit. Yee, I feel like such a badass. That's what you get for beating the helicopter without taking a hit. Not in against the, in the whole level, just not taking it against said helicopter. Hope that you can hear the boss music, cause it's awesome and everyone should love it. Super overpowered flamethrower, go! Man, if I only hadn't taken that one stupid hit, I would have been fine. Oh, I know. I know you don't get any health back for any reason. I tried this once before, remember? That's level one. Level two! It's more of an underground sort of cavern. And the boss is gonna be... Well, I won't spoil it, but you know, you'll see. Not particularly exciting or anything. But again, it's on easy, so I should have a much easier time of it. This segment is somewhat nightmarish to not get hit on. <laughs> yeah, but now you have proof. I was going to say, in harder difficulties, but I think just in general. And this level, I think they might not exist in easy mode, but there are some really obnoxious fucking enemies. They crawl along through the ground and they're very hard to spot in time, and if you don't, then they're going to hit you. They have a telltale sign, but it's you've got to be looking for it, really. Falling rocks. My one weakness. Ooh, bagarb. As for the katana, no, I haven't really. I feel like I should. I think I did try and use it again, and it was, I mainly used it to attempt to reflect projectiles, but it just isn't reliable at doing that. I mean, yeah, you know, you can do it, but you've got to get it spot on, and you can't really aim it either. So you can go to all the effort and have it be for nothing. Which sucks, really sucks. It sucks a whole bunch, you know it does. And for medical reasons, I probably won't do that again. <laughs> See, I look like I'm breezing through it all now, but that is only because it's on either. I'm telling you. I'm very hard if I was doing this much, you know, casual jumping about, I'd be dead already. So here's boss two, Gibby and Stu. This is another boss that I've had a lot of practice at, like Guppy, so I can do it without getting hit. It's just doing the whole level and the boss is always tricky. Unless you're on easy, then it's not so much. For example, they fire those a lot quicker in hard and they, they come up in uh, from the ground nearer to you. They'll fire additional shots in this section. And I... Oh, they are going to use that. No, they're not going to use their combo attack. That's the hardest to dodge. The drill evader is really tough. The rest of the level is actually not that bad. Agreed, actually, yeah. That big open area with the lava usually has one of the bosses jumping around shooting at you during it, but it doesn't on evil. On evil? On easy? Well, that was just stupid. I shouldn't have been hit there at all. Stage 3! I can't remember what they call it, but it's kind of like a military facility, I think. The gimmick here is all these lasers. If you break them, it sets an alarm off and has lots of little flying robots chase you down. That was really dumb. Now I've taken two dumb hits.
not breaking any of the lasers through your uh, through the course of your attempt at the level nets you a special achievement. Because each level has one, and it doesn't explain what you need to do to get them, but the name of them is sometimes a clue. For example, the special one in level 2 back there was to blow up all the little eggs in the level. Which I did by accident when I got it, because I just did it you know, out of habit. For the first level, I think it was break all the chandeliers. For this one, it was, yeah, the alarms. For the other ones, I have no fucking idea. Off the top of my head, anyway. Okay, sub-boss coming up. Remember the helicopter? Well, he has a friend. But you won't get to see what it is until this obnoxious section. <laughs> These are the little flying robots that swarm you if you um, set the alarm on. They're very annoying. You don't want to do it, basically. Ooh, garb. What Mouse does when he runs out of commentary. Okay, here comes the boss. There's also achievements for beating each of the bosses and each of the sub-bosses without getting hit once. I've already got the helicopter one, as you've seen. I haven't got this one yet. Because it can be a bit of an arse, to tell you the truth. That said, I've never really faced it much on easy, so... Might have a shot at it. Because it doesn't distinguish between difficulty for those. So you can kind of cheese it, I guess, by doing it on either. There you go. Achievement unlocked! S rank spider core. Now the alarm f has to get triggered. This one I don't think counts because you get the achievement for not breaking the alarms before this. Because I'm pretty sure that we're near the end of the level now. I quite like this section actually because it's a little it's a bit creative. You've got to be constantly running away and hitting these buttons to get through the doors. If you fail, well, you're going to get hit a whole bunch, aren't you? And here's our boss. White Mark II. He's not the most difficult boss in the universe, even on the harder difficulties. But, yeah, he can catch you off guard if you're not careful. Very vulnerable to the flamethrower when he's not got his shield section up. He also likes to fire a lot of rockets at you. I just got hit, didn't I? Made myself look really stupid. It can also go through his shield, which is kind of handy. It doesn't do anywhere near as much damage that way, because it's like an area of effect thing, but... Uh... Hello, Mr. Rocket. You definitely don't need to exist anymore. Okay, I just did the exact same thing again. That was really dumb. That was really dumb. So is that. This is called getting careless. What can you do about it? Not a whole lot. Unless you... Suck less. Suck less of the game if you can. There we go. And then he spazzes right the fuck out. The laser destroys this guy. Yeah, the problem with that is aiming it. <laughs> That's what I did used to use the laser quite a lot, but aiming it with the joypad is literally impossible. And the slow fire rate means it's useless. Unless it's a really big and not very mobile enemy, i.e. some of the bosses. Oh, for goodness sake. Now, I'm just getting careless. Not paying attention to my surroundings. Oh, no, no. Pink robots! This level is a feat is on the train, as you can probably see. And the boss... Oh, I can't remember her name. Bunny something. Oh, for fuck's sake. Getting really careless again. I'm stupid. Maybe I don't deserve to live in the first place. It's kind of like Shinobi in that you get these exclamations and then the ceiling comes in. Oh, for God's sake. A lot of dumbassery on the cards today. I've just remembered where I got to on my last attempt at this. It's the sub-boss of this level, because I, there was a point in it where I just can't see how you can avoid getting hit. Oh, garb. I'm not going up there. How stupid do you think I am? This is it. 
This isn't the part where I don't think you can avoid getting hit, although I didn't, because I'm stupid. But you have to, do have to fight this thing properly in a minute, and that's kind of annoying. There's one attack that it does, I just cannot see the safe spot in, and I just walk straight into that. Someone, literally. Yeah, you've got to go back a little or it's going to catch you. Here we go. Don't fancy my chances of winning, I've got a couple of hits left and that's it. Yeah, that's the bit. I'm genuinely not sure how you dodge that. Maybe you just got a slow time and get up on one of the side bits, but I'm pretty sure that damages you. Actually, it might not be that attack I was thinking of. Oh yeah, that's it. It's not that attack I was thinking of. It's when he drops down on you. As with the other sub-bosses, this is one you can, you know, get an achievement for beating without getting hit, but pff, good luck with that. I'm not sure. I would imagine that the, the section beforehand doesn't count for that. Where you're dodging his claws. Yeah, this bit. This seems to be the only safe place you can stand. And I'm never quick enough. Well, if I can get further than I did last time, that's still an improvement, right? Hey, S rank on the Mantis Core. Fuck. Fuck. Alright, coming up on the real boss now, and this is where I'm going to get really screwed. Auto-scrolling segment. We all know how much I love those. Can't damage this thing. The boss's name is Bunny Rocket. Now oh, I remember. It's very, very... Yeah, there you go. I had a feeling I wasn't going to get much further than that. Yeah, I apparently wasn't paying enough attention to see it coming. Oh well, never mind. I think that'll do for Bleed for now. I'm sure I've bored you all to tears already.